good to see everybody. Oh man, I tell you, when I, when I, when I look at that video, it just so stirs my heart. What, what a man, what a legacy, you know, but it's just, it just goes to prove that when we are submitted, completely submitted to God, there is nothing that we cannot do. Amen. So, you know, uh, I, you know, as many love Dr. Billy Graham and, um, like I said, I, I'm just amazed at what God can do just through one man submitted, one man yielded to the power of God, to the power of the Holy Ghost, being obedient to him and just and just just saying, here, Lord, here I am, just like the song we sang this morning. Amen. Um, I, I really be, well, let me pray and then we'll we'll move forward. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, thank you for this day. Lord, thank you for Dr. Billy Graham and the life and the legacy, Father. And I know that most of us, probably all of us, have been touched in some way, form, or fashion by his ministry, Father. And Lord, we're so grateful. Lord, we want to send our condolences to the, the Graham family, Father. And uh, we just ask, Holy Spirit, Lord, that you have your way in this place. Lord, we know that you have a right now word for us, Father God. And Lord, may not the word fall on deaf ears and stony, cold hearts, Father God. But Lord, may we open our hearts to receive the word. May we open our minds so our minds can be renewed by the word, Father, so that we can be changed, Father God, and we can truly say with all of our hearts, Lord, I surrender all. Lord, use me. Lord, take me. As Phil talked about, Lord, take the talents that you've blessed me with and use it for your glory, for your honor, Father God. It's a privilege, Father God. It is a privilege, Father, to serve such a great and awesome God, Lord. We just want to say we love you, Father. Again, have your way, Holy Ghost. We ask these now in Jesus' name and all God's people say amen, amen. 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 Okay, well, right off the top, I just wanted to say, guys, we are really living in prophetic times. We talked a little bit about this in Sunday school. And I really believe that now is the time to make sure that we are adhering to our prophetic call. Because every one of us have a prophetic call on our life. And watch this. And because we don't fulfill the prophetic call in our life, we miss our purpose. And the, when we miss our purpose, then we end up frustrated, we end up uh, bitter, we can end up mad, we can end up on just this emotional up and down roller coaster because we keep missing our purpose. But you got to make sure that you're operating within your prophetic call that God has placed on your life before you was even born. Amen. So as I was just thinking about this, I said, okay, Lord, so, so what are we going to talk about? And what I'm going to talk about today is the prophetic power of purpose. I'll say that again. The prophetic power of purpose. Somebody say purpose. purpose. Come on, say purpose. purpose. Well, let's talk a little bit about what purpose is. Purpose, and, and you know, me and Michelle always vibe on this, these word things, but uh, purpose, right off the root word, means to propose, to set forth and display, or a forward position. Now, Webster's Dictionary defined purpose as, it's a definition, I mean, the definition is to intend, resolve, or plan, watch this, with a specific end in view. Watch this. Not accidentally, but by design, intentionally, a direction toward a specific end, and it's not meaningless. Okay, so that's purpose. But then there's also the prophetic, amen? And, and you know, I was listening, and I, and I know uh, Pop loves him, and maybe some of you other guys may like him, but I love Sid Roth. And Sid Roth had a particular special, and uh, 
maybe, maybe me and Paul can work that out, but he had like three different prophets, I mean very well-known prophets, to get on his show, and they, pastor, were talking about what God has shown them for this up and upcoming 2018, amen? And I'm telling you, there is just some words that these brothers were speaking, and I'm telling you, I'm sitting there and I'm writing them down, and, and, and I'm just like, man, Lord, this is great, this is great, this is great, because you got to get in the flow of the prophetic. Michelle, no, come on now. We have, and we have to understand because within that, once again, it gives us our purpose. So let me talk a little bit about prophecy just for a second and then we will move forward. Okay, scripture plainly presents prediction as a manifestation of God's power, glorifying his person, exalting his ex exemptive work in Christ, and setting forth the divine character of his revealed words. Amen? The words of fulfilled prophecies with regard to the first advent of Christ speaks of the wisdom and power of God in interposing for man's need. Scripture not only presents the prophetic word as a demonstration of God's power and wisdom, but it presents his response to man's need. And since man is ignorant, we're, I mean, in some area, we're all ignorant. That's why we need God, amen? That's why when the prophecy goes forth, it's foretelling you what's to come so that you won't be ignorant. Okay. Okay, here we go. <laughs> okay, so since man is ignorant of what a day may bring forth, the revel watch this now, the revelation of God's will for the present and the disclosure of his plans and purposes for the future are of inestimable benefit to the believer. Did y'all hear that? And in the light of these facts, what, now watch this now, in light of these facts, widespread neglect of biblical prophecy is not only tragic, but it's also inexcusable. Did y'all hear that? So none of us can't stand before God and say, well, Lord, you know, I don't know. Because he said, he sa I set forth these prophecies right here in the book. And then if there's a man or woman of God who's full of the spirit of God and then comes and then speaks a prophecy over your life, then that ought to be more fuel to the fire to say, obviously God has something in particular in mind for me down the road. And if I adhere to the words spoken by the man or the woman or the prophet of God, then I will be better prepared for my future. Amen. God, thank you, Holy Ghost. See, this is why you got to speak and prophesy over your children. Because, see, you don't know what lies ahead. But I'm going to tell you this for sure. There is a darkness that's covering this earth, and this darkness is trying to consume you and I, our children, the whole generation, amen? And so that's why we need prophecy, amen? And when I understand the prophetic, then I can understand my purpose, and then I can operate within the purpose, amen? But how many of us can truly say, you know what, Lord, I'm operating within my purpose, and I understand the prophetic call upon my life. My people perish for lack of? But, but this little article said that there, there is no excuse, amen? Okay, so now watch this. See, purpose is both personal and corporate. And what it does is the two will merge together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break it down. I'm going to break down the personal side of pur purpose, and then I want to break down the corporate side of uh, purpose. Now, first of all, let's look at the personal. Number one, let's uh, turn to Papa uh, Will up there, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4 and 5. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4 and 5. And my sister will uh, read the scripture for us today. God bless you. So Ephesians, now please, 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 let's listen to this now. This is, this is very important now, especially for the time that we're in and the shift that God is making within the spirit realm. Amen. Okay, so go ahead, sis. Even as in his love he chose us, actually picked us out for himself as mm -hmm. his own mm -hmm. in Christ 
before the foundation of the world, mm -hmm. that we should be holy, mm -hmm. consecrated, and set apart for him, mm -hmm. and blameless in his sight, even above reproach, before him in love. Verse 5. For he foreordained us, mm -hmm. destined us, planned in love for us to be adopted, revealed as his own children through Jesus Christ in accordance with the purpose of his will mm -hmm. because it pleased him and was his kind intent. Okay, so you hear that. So, you know, we had a little incident today, and I'm, I'm not going to run the dude out, but uh, the fella got called out for something, and, and what he said was, and I heard him, boy, I felt bad for the dude. I heard him say, well, you know what? I was trying to, to gain the satisfaction. I was trying to please the particular person, but the person that he was trying to please was the one that had to call him out about some things that he wasn't quite doing, and he got upset, okay? Now, a lot of times, if someone calls us out on something, and if we're not secure enough, that's why Pop's always talking about love, if we're not secure enough in, in the love of, that God has for us, we will become insecure, we will get mad, we will cop an attitude and act like, who you think you're talking to? Am I the only one? Okay, so right off the top, if you want to understand your purpose personally, then you need to make sure you understand this scripture. Because the Bible says, let's go back to verse 4. It says, even as in love, in his love, watch this, he chose us. So you can put your name in there. In this love, God chose Willie Tillman. God chose Michelle Dodder. You see, God chose you. So there, see, see, the enemy is always in society around us because they don't know who they are. They're always trying to get someone to be at that same level, not knowing who they, who they are. But I told the young fella, I'm going to tell you this, homeboy, let me tell you this, sir, that what is this little moment going to mean to you a month from now, two months from now, five months from now? A year from now, this is just but a bleep. This is just for a moment. Don't, don't, get, don't let your cage get rattled. And I know that God's always dealing with me about that because when the devil comes and he begins to try to throw his fiery, thank you, Holy Ghost, throw his fiery darts at you, and if I'm not secured in his love, then I'll get rattled by everything that the enemy throws against me, and then I start talking, woe is me, and I start believing the fact that I'm not loved, that I have no purpose, that there's no prophecy over my life, but that's a bold lie from the enemy, and you better tell him so. Because the word says right here, amen, that he chose us. He actually, think about this, he actually picked you out. Think about what he's saying here, church. Okay, okay let, me, let, me, let me break it down, Michelle. Let me break it down, let me break it down like this, okay? So, so as you see my attire today, okay, which is pretty, you know, but guess who helped me? Someone helped me pick this out so that I could wear. So I chose those shoes. We chose the jacket, chose the shirt, picked it out, and now I'm wearing it. It's all good. Okay, God chose you, and God picked you out, and watch this, and he clothed you with a prophetic word, and he clothed you with his anointing, and he says, wear that anointing, wear that purpose, and shine, shine, shine to a world that doesn't understand their purpose. Oh, we're going we gonna, to we gonna get on it. We're going to get on it. Okay, amen. Amen. Now watch this. Watch this. So watch this. So he picked you. Man, that's why you ought to, every day when you wake up and those thoughts be coming in your mind, you ought to say, wait a minute, devil. The word says that my God picked me out before the foundation of the world. And not only did he not pick me out, but he picked me out so that I can be holy. He picked me out so I can be consecrated. He picked me out so I can be set apart for him. See, here's the problem, though. Here's the problem. Because, see, if you're self-centered, then everything evolves around you. And don't we get, I mean, we all guilty of it from time to time. We all get self-centered, don't we? And everything evolves around us. But the Word said he did it 
all for you, for him. Am, am I making sense? Is that what the words say? Okay, now watch this, watch this. So not only uh, consecrated, not only set apart for him, but also to be blameless in his sight, even, watch this, above reproach. Before him in love. Above reproach. Listen to that. Above reproach. And see, and see, thank you, Holy Ghost. See, you're already above reproach because watch this. Hold your place and turn to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6. Y'all know I love this scripture. This is my scripture right here now. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6. See, I'm already above reproach. Why? Because when Ephesians chapter 2, it says, watch this, and he raised us up together. Did you hear that? That's why I'm above reproach. That's why you're above reproach, because the word said that he raised us up together with him and made us sit down together, giving us joint seating. Thank you, Holy Ghost. See, that's, see thank you, Holy Spirit. See, that's why you can't relax, because you out your seat, and you ain't sitting down. You keep getting out your seat. God keep telling you to sit down, but you keep getting up. And then you wonder why you're not living above reproach. Because anytime I get up and out my seat, I remove myself from the covering of God, and I get into an area that I don't need to even be involved in, and then I want to try to run back, which you can, but if you continue to stay, then you're not living above reproach because you're out your seat. You done removed yourself from the prophetic position that God placed into your life. And that's why you can't fulfill your purpose. Come on now. Is this making sense? Okay, okay. Now let's go on to verse 5, please. Now watch this. For he foreordained, and I put in my Bible, me. Ephesians 1, 5, please. Thank you, ma'am. Ephesians 1, 5. Okay, so he foreordained us, and watch this, and destined us, and watch this, and everything planned for us, he planned it in love, the word says. And watch this, and, and, and we ought to be thanking God because it says to be adopted and revealed as his own children through Christ. Amen. Now watch this, in accor- watch this, in accordance with the what? In accordance with the what? The purpose of his will, because it pleased him and it was his kind intent. Listen to that, what that word is saying. Amen? Listen to what that word is saying. So see, you can't say that you don't have a purpose because the word says it clear right here that in Christ, according with his purpose, and according to his will, and accordance to his kind intentions, he set you and spoke a purpose over your life. He gave you a prophetic utterance. And the question is, are you living it? Do you understand this personally? Now let me tell you this. I didn't understand it for a long time. I told the class, uh, you know, one of our sisters was going through some, some marital issues and she was talking about, you know, the things that her husband did and didn't do, you know what I'm saying, whatever. And, and I looked at her and I said, let me tell you something, sis, I was that guy. Nasty in the mouth, put you down, you better not say nothing back, just nasty and you know the biggest problem was it wasn't the sister it wasn't the wife it wasn't the the missus it was because I misunderstood my purpose and because I misunderstood understood my purpose then I was frustrated and I took all my frustrations out on her and how many of us men do the same exact thing? Because you're not willing to humble yourself and you're not willing to get into this word and you're not willing to get on your knees and find out what's your prophetic purpose. You want to take it out on your gal. What's wrong with you? Who you think you are? When you got this prophetic word right here and that's why the church is lacking power. 
You better get on your knees, man. You better get in this word, man, or you're going to end up losing more than you think you're gaining because of your nastiness. And because of my nastiness, Miss Rachel, I lost more than what I bargained for because the devil never paints that picture like that. He never lets you see the big picture. Oh, I'm dipping and I'm dabbing and I'm dunking and, and trying to be slick and sly and, you know, what's up, Ma, here and what's up, Ma, there? And eventually it came right back around. And watch this. And then the moment she started, she decided to step out. Now I want to cop an attitude and get mad and want to fight everybody. Mm. Oh, Michelle, you wouldn't want to see me on that day. I, I saw that joker and I saw her. And I said, wait a minute, I still got this ring on my finger. What, 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 what's going on here? But then I never thought about how she felt. Well, wait a, wait, wait, wait a minute, what, 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 what you doing in the computer room, son? Oh, who, who, who's that? You, who, who you talking to on the phone, kid? Hmm. Boy, when that shoe was on your foot, it don't feel good, Pastor. So you want everybody else to wear the shoe, but you don't want the shoe on your foot. And then when the shoe was on your foot, now you hollering and crying and, and snorting and, and carrying on. And I'm telling you, man, Michelle, that's the worst pain. And then what makes it harder is when the Lord shows you what you've done and you feel so sorry in your heart to the Lord but then you want to say sorry to that person and they're so bitter and they're so mad and they're so angry at you because of how you behave they don't even want to hear it how hurtful is that when you're really being sincere I'm sincerely sorry honey I didn't see myself I, I didn't I didn't know you know what I mean maybe I did know but I didn't yield I didn't understand would you please forgive me Please don't leave me. And there she goes, walking right out the door. I'm telling you, that's real. And how many people in the church experience the same thing I experience on a daily basis? Because I didn't understand my purpose. I didn't understand the prophetic word that God had spoken over my life before I was even born. but I understand it now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I got him now. Oh, I got him now. That's why I'm still standing in Jesus, but I got him now. Hallelujah. And I hope that this will encourage you. If you don't know, please read Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4 and 5, and that will tell you all you need to know, at least personally, so that you can be secure in your womanhood, in your manhood, in Christ. And anytime the devil tries to throw you a lie, you let him know what Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4 and 5 says. Hallelujah. I'm telling you that thing. Whew. Okay. I'm trying to move on, Holy Ghost. Trying to move on. Okay. But please, 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 please hear, please, please hear this word from the Lord. I know it's, I know this is from God, man. I know this is a God word this morning. Amen, Pastor? So please adhere. Please, please, please. I'm just trying to tell you, don't, don't do what I did. Amen? And lost it all. Okay, so that's the personal purpose, okay? Now let's look at it from a corporate point of view, Okay. Uh, Papa, if you turn up there to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, amen? Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, and my sister will read that for us. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. For we are God's own handiwork, his workmanship, mm -hmm. recreated in Christ Jesus, born anew that we may do those good works which mm -hmm. God predestined, planned mm -hmm. beforehand for us, taking paths which he prepared ahead of time, that we should walk in them, living the good life which mm -hmm. he prearranged and made ready for us to live. Hold, okay. 
So now let's watch this. Okay, so it says, so we are God's own handiwork. Another, again, that's another bomb that you can throw against the devil when he tries to say that you're worthless. You can look at him and say, I am God's own handiwork. I am his workmanship. He took time to form and fashion me. Listen, kids, when them teachers try to tell you something other than what you are, when it comes to God, and if they tell you something different, you better tell them, well, let me tell you what my Bible says, because my Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, that I am not an amoeba, I am not from some monkey, you know, I'm not from some little uh, bleeb on the ground, I am God's own handiwork, I am his workmanship. Amen? Okay, now watch this, watch this. Oh, 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 hang on now, hang on. Okay, so he says, watch this. So we are God's own handiwork, right? His workmanship, right? Watch this. Recreated in Christ Jesus and born anew. So number one, watch this. So he created us, amen. When he created the, the, the man and the woman in the garden, he created the man, and then he created Rachel. He created Charles. He created Pastor, Mom, Pop. You know, he created us, right? And then he came back and recreate us in Christ. <laughs> Come on now. He recreated us in Christ. Watch this. Born anew that we may do those good works. Watch this. Which God predestined. God preplanned. His prearranged good life. See, that's the prophecy right there. That's the prophecy right there, church. That's the purpose. That's, that's, why, that's why we can say that there's, there's a prophetic power in purpose, amen? Because when I realize this scripture, it's all good. Yeah. Amen? It's all good. Look what he did. Look at how much, in, that's why you should know you're special. Somebody say, I'm special. I'm special. Somebody say, I'm special. I'm special. Look at what he did. We are created in God's own handiwork. We are his workmanship, recreated in Christ Jesus, born anew, that we may do those good works which God predestined, pre-planned, planned beforehand for us, taking, watch this, paths which he prepared ahead of time. So this, put, this, this is like walking on solid ground because everywhere my foot trods, God already knew it and it was already pre-planned beforehand. Oh, that kind of rhyme, pre-planned beforehand. Wow, okay, okay, we can do a little, you know. Oh, pre-planned beforehand, pre-planned beforehand. Okay, anyways, y'all don't get me started, please. <laughs> Watch it, Charlie, I see you. Okay. <laughs> So, so he prepared these things ahead of time, watch this, that we should walk in them, right? Living the good life. In God, life is good. I'd rather be in the darkest pit with God than be up on the mountaintop and be in the highest uh, echelon of society and be around a whole bunch of godless people and me myself living godless. They say, they think they got it good, but is that really the good life? See, watch this, folks. See, the good life is the God life, amen? And when I'm living the God life, then I'm living the good life, amen? So if you want the good life, then make sure you live in the God life, amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, and it says that we should walk in them, live in the good life which God, he prearranged and made ready for us to what? Yeah. To live. See, <laughs> I remember, and y'all heard me say this so many times, I remember when, when, when life for Willie Tillman was a life that was not being lived. All I could see is death 
and darkness and despair and de depression and anger and bitterness and frustration. And y'all have heard me say this story. And I lived like that for three long years. Nothing but darkness. No light. Down in the dumps. Constantly. Full of fear. So afraid that I didn't even want to come out of my room just to go into the kitchen. That, uh, that fearful. So afraid that I, I, I didn't even want to come out of my room not only to go in the kitchen, but uh, all my nieces and nephews were over and they were asking me to come in the living room to watch TV. And I was too afraid to, do, to go in the living room just to watch TV. But all things work together for the good. Because the word says that I, I've already pre prearranged and pre-planned a good life for you, Willie Tillman. I've already pre 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 y'all oh boy. You know what it is. <laughs> pa, 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 pa. Pre, pre, pre. Amen. But he pre-planned beforehand and he knew and he was right there the whole time. I just couldn't see him. Until I started to reach out. And when I began to reach out, he began to reach in. Oh, y'all, did y'all hear that? And then he started pouring in purpose. And he helped me to understand the prophetic. But first, sometimes we just got to reach out. Reach out, I'll be there. Okay, y'all know the song, I mean, okay. <laughs> they know the song. So, so as we move on, and, and again, then we wonder why many Christians are frustrated, they're bitter, they're angry, they're nasty-tempered, they're grouchy, and they're very snippy. And again, because we, we experience all these plethora of emotional gymnastics, again, simply because we're not living within our God-given prophetic purpose. Somebody say purpose. purpose. Come on, purpose. Purpose. Okay, now, and again, if I don't have purpose, then I have no confidence. And I'm sure, you know, uh, I, I mean, you know, I haven't asked any of the ladies, you know, personally, but boy, you know, for, for a woman to deal with a man that doesn't have any confidence, or for a man that deals with any woman that doesn't have any confidence, and I've heard pastor tell the story, well, you know, this girl, she was a beauty queen, beauty pageant, just, just a gorgeous, and, and she kept saying, I'm ugly. I'm ugly, I'm, because she has no confidence. She has no confidence. But when I think about all the things that God pre-planned, and if I'm in God living the God life, Charlie, then I should not have any dealings when it comes to confidence. My, because my confidence is in God. I shouldn't have to be graveling whether, oh, you know, uh, am I or am I not? You know, am I this or am I that? No, 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 no. The, the thing is, you have confidence in God and that he will do what he says he will do. And see, that's part of the problem because if, if you don't understand that God's going to do what he says you're going to do, you're going to falter every time. You're going to, like I did, because I didn't believe God was who he says he was. Well, then if you're God and you're saying you're God, then why would you allow all this to happen, Floyd? Why is all this mess going on if you're saying that you're God? But I didn't read the book. And sometimes we do the same thing, don't we? Come on now. Can we keep that real? Sometimes we do the same exact thing. And if we, and the reason for our lack of confidence, watch this, watch this is because I never confide in God. I have no confidence because I never confide in God. See, you gotta confide in God on a daily basis. Because if I don't confide in God, Satan will try to put his mess in me and confide his mess in me. So if I don't confide in God and then when fear comes and because I don't have no confidence in God, then fear gets in me. So now I'm confiding in fear. I'm legitimizing fear. 
You're supposed to be legitimizing the word of God. You're supposed to be legitimizing the truth, but if you're not, then you're leg legitimizing fear. We can legitimize lust. We can legitimize perversion. We can legitimize anything that's of the flesh if our confidence is not in God. Does that make sense? Okay, okay, so watch this. Uh, Philippians chapter 1, verse 6. I hope this is helping people this morning. I hope this is helping you this morning. Uh, uh, Philippians chapter 1, verse 6. Remember, we have to confide in God. Go ahead, ma'am. And I am convinced and sure of this very thing. Hold up. What did he say right off the top? Convinced. He says, I'm convinced. So watch this. So, so Michelle, if, if, if I come up to you and I say, well, 1 plus 1 is 20, and you're going to be like, what? No, 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 no. Now, no, sis, I'm convinced 1 plus 1 is 20. Did you hear that? She said, then your reality is a lie. And how many, thank you, you hit it right on the head. And how many of us think that we're in the reality, but the reality is really is a lie? Because you put your confidence in the lie instead of confiding and putting your confidence in your master. So somebody might need a reality check this morning. Some of us need a reality check this morning, church. Come on now. And y'all heard me say at Sunday school class, you better check yourself before you wreck yourself. <laughs> I'm sorry. Boy, that boy. <laughs> Amen. But I hope y'all understand what that means. That means you better get it together before you crash and burn. How about that? Is that a little, e is that a little easier? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got to tell the story real quick. I got this, this kid, Big Nog's son. Oh, really? This boy is, a, this young kid right out of high school, we work with him, and the boy is just a hoot. And for some reason, I don't know, he's gravitated to me, you know, so I'm trying to, you know, throw little, little nuggets at him every now and then, a truth or whatever. So, but he always likes to turn to me, and <laughs> now he's, he's mixed himself. He's black and white, but he's always telling me, well, listen to what that white boy just said. I'm like, wait a minute, dude, you're white and black yourself. What the, what the? I said, this cat is off the chain. Did you just hear what that white boy just said? Dude, you white too. I work with your daddy. But I love the kid, though. I, I, just, I just love him. I love him. He's a great guy. But I, I, I just had to throw that out. <laughs> I'm like, dude, you're white, too. You know, what do you, 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 I don't get it, you know. Anyways, <laughs> I'm trying not to get off track. <laughs> okay, so, so back to Philippians. Okay, so it says, it says, so, so, and I am convinced, watch this, and I'm sure of this very thing that he who began a what? Good work. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute, a good work. I, I think I've heard that just a second ago. Didn't we just talk about that just a second ago? Uh, 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 go, go ahead. Okay, so we got to go back to Ephesians. We got to go back to Ephesians, okay? And we're going to look at, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. So, so verse 10 We'll look at verse 10 real quick, and it says, For we are God's own work, handiwork in his workmanship, recreated in Christ Jesus, born anew that we may do those good works. Hmm, that sounds like a theme. Okay, now let's look at it. Uh, uh, Philippians 1 and 6, and it says, That he who began a good work in you, you hear that? In you. Is he doing a good work in you? Are we allowing him to do the good work in you? Because he may, all, he may want to come and do all the good works he wants, but if I keep putting up the stop sign, say, say no to the hand or stop with the hand or whatever the, the saying is, whatever that is, if, 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 if I put up the stop sign, then he can't, he's a gentleman. He's not going to force himself on me. 
I'm not going to force my good works on you, son. I'm not going to force my good works on you, daughter. But if you open up your heart and say, Lord, here I am, Lord. Do what you got to do, Lord. Cleanse me, Lord. Reshape me. Retool me. Do whatever you got to do so that I can do those good works, which Ephesians 2 and 10 says, beforehand, that you already pre-planned before I was even born. Does that make sense? So that's why he says, and back to Philippians 1 and 6, that's why he says, that's because he began a good work in you, and, uh, and you will continue, and he will continue that work until the day of Jesus Christ, right up to the time of his return, developing that good work and perfecting and bringing it to full completion in you. Now, can you put that uh, same scripture, Brother Willie, in the King James Version? Let's look at it from the King, King James Version real quick. And Rachel, would you read that for me when he pulls it up? Being confident of this very thing, mm -hmm. that he which hath begun a good work in you mm -hmm. will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. So he will, oh, okay, oh, here we go now. Watch this, watch this. So the word says that he will perform it. He will perform it. Who's performing it? God. God will. Okay, now, now I'm just going to show you my hand right up top. I'm not trying to be nasty, but I'm just telling you what the Lord put in my heart. Okay, so, so it says, and he will perform it. See, a lot, thank you, Holy Ghost. See, a lot of times back in that day when I was going through all that mess with the missus, see, all my preaching was was performance. My preaching was performance because that's where I derived my self-confidence and that's where I derived my self-esteem when I was up on the stage and then as soon as I got off the stage and the drive home, what'd you say to me, woman? Because that was performance-based. See, I was performing, not he performing. See, see, there's a difference between that Willie Tillman then and that Billy Graham up on the screen. Because he was performing his work through Dr. Billy Graham while Willie Tillman, so-called preacher, was up there performing just so I can make somebody shout and holler and say amen. Word, Spence? And a, and a lot of times we do the same thing, church. All churches is nothing but a performance so that we can look good in front of each other. Instead of letting the word and letting God perform through you, you come to church performing for everybody else. And then as soon as you get home, click, click, nasty, boom, bat, whatever, the flesh kicks in as soon as you walk out the door. And that's the difference between a man of God and woman of God that's anointed by God. That's why there's power in their preaching, amen. Because it's God working through them. It's not a performance. And you can tell the difference. That's why it says perform. He will perform that work. Amen? And that's why, thank you, Holy Ghost, and that's why whenever we do get an opportunity, we can be confident in him because we know that it's him doing the work through us as pastor always says but you got to let him do the work to you monday Tuesday, wednesday thursday friday saturday so what work is he doing to you throughout the week so that he can perform through you amen because if he ain't doing nothing to you then you just up there performing if i want a performance i'm gonna go see the commodores you know I'm going to see Earth, Wind, and Fire, you know, somebody like that, you know, if I want to perform it. I didn't come to church for no performance, amen. God, hey, watch this. God didn't come to church for no performance. He's trying to look for people that he can work his power through. He's looking for people who understand their purpose. He's, under, he's looking for people that understand the prophetic call that is upon their life so that he can put his super on, his, on your natural and use you, amen. Hallelujah. 
That's what he's looking for, and that's why Paul had so much confidence. Now watch this. Now, uh, back when we look back at Ephesians 2 and 10, and it says, and living the good life. Now watch this. Now, it, I'm sure in the heavenlies, as God is looking on the life of Paul, I'm sure he didn't take no pleasure when the brother was getting stoned. I'm sure. I'm sure that had to break his heart. I know it had to break his heart every time they, he saw his son being whipped. I'm sure that had to hurt him. I'm sure it hurt him when he saw him shipwrecked and hungry and cold and nowhere to go, Brother Charlie. You see what I'm saying? But watch this. But, he, but, 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 but the Lord said, look, Paul, your life is in my hand. I got a plan, and all of this has been prearranged. So just know that even when you're floating on a, on a piece of wood out in the middle of the water, it's still the good life. See, 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 we, see, we always want to, we always want to put a label on what we think the good life is, but maybe what you think the good life is, isn't really the good life. Because if I'm living the God life, then there's going to be some trials. There's going to be some, uh, uh, some tribulations. Jesus says, no servant is above the master. And if they tried me, they're going to try you. But you got to determine, well, do I want the good life or I want the God good life? Paul said, I want the God good life, and, he sh and his back showed it. Paul, can you come up and take off your shirt, sir? Oh, man, look at those scars on your back. Lazarus, you're sick? Oh, did y'all hear about Lazarus? He just died. What? See, God don't take pleasure in the bad things that happen to us, but he can use it for the good and if you get the right perspective if you look at it correctly and you understand and you stand in the mess you stand in the hurt you stand in the pain convinced and sure of this very thing that he who began a good work in me will continue that work till the day Jesus calls me home and that's the prophecy, amen? That's the purpose, amen? And when, you, and when we begin to understand this, that's why I told the ladies this morning, uh, you know, I didn't get a chance to talk to Michelle about it, but I had a little thing again this weekend, you know, and I had to eat some humble pie and come and apologize for my nastiness and the, my words and my temper, you know. But the thing about it is, what I love about it, in the midst of it, it's still good because God said, you're going to do this. And you're going to apologize. And you're going to humble yourself. And when I did, bam, I got the promotion because I experienced the power of peace. And I experienced the power of God working through me as I humbled myself. I experienced the power. And that's the blessing, amen. So if you're powerless, then what, what, what are you doing? Watch this, and I'm sure of this very thing, that he who began a what? Well, wait a minute, wait a minute, a good work. I, I think I've heard that just a second ago. Didn't we just talk about that just a second ago? Uh, 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 go, go ahead. Okay, so we got to go back to Ephesians. We got to go back to Ephesians, okay? And we're going to look at, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. So, so verse 10 We'll look at verse 10 real quick, and it says, For we are God's own work, handiwork, and his workmanship, recreated in Christ Jesus, born anew, that we may do those good works. Hmm, that sounds like a theme. Okay, now let's look at it. Uh, uh, Philippians 1 and 6, and it says, That he who began a good work in you, you hear that? In you. Is he doing a good work in you? Are we allowing him to do the good work in you? Because he may, all, he may want to come and do all the good works he wants, but if I keep putting up the stop sign, say, say no to the hand or stop with the hand or whatever the, the saying is, whatever that is, if, 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 if I put up the stop sign, then he can't, he's a gentleman. He's not going to force himself on me. 
I'm not going to force my good works on you, son. I'm not going to force my good works on you, daughter. But if you open up your heart and say, Lord, here I am, Lord. Do what you got to do, Lord. Cleanse me, Lord. Reshape me. Retool me. Do whatever you got to do so that I can do those good works, which Ephesians 2 and 10 says, beforehand, that you already pre-planned before I was even born. Does that make sense? So that's why he says, and back to Philippians 1 and 6, that's why he says, that's because he began a good work in you, and, uh, and you will continue, and he will continue that work until the day of Jesus Christ, right up to the time of his return, developing that good work and perfecting and bringing it to full completion in you. Now, can you put that uh, same scripture, Brother Willie, in the King James Version? Let's look at it from the King, King James Version real quick. And Rachel, would you read that for me when he pulls it up? Being confident of this very thing, mm -hmm. that he which hath begun a good work in you mm -hmm. will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. So he will, oh, okay, oh, here we go now. Watch this, watch this. So the word says that he will perform it. He will perform it. Who's performing it? God will. Okay, now, now I'm just going to show you my hand right up top. I'm not trying to be nasty, but I'm just telling you what the Lord put in my heart. Okay, so, so it says, and he will perform it. See, a lot, thank you, Holy Ghost. See, a lot of times back in that day when I was going through all that mess with the missus, see, all my preaching was was performance. My preaching was performance because that's where I derived my self-confidence and that's where I derived my self-esteem when I was up on the stage and then as soon as I got off the stage and the drive home, what'd you say to me, woman? Because that was performance-based. See, I was performing, not he performing. See, see, there's a difference between that Willie Tillman then and that Billy Graham up on the screen. Because he was performing his work through Dr. Billy Graham while Willie Tillman, so-called preacher, was up there performing just so I can make somebody shout and holler and say amen. Word, Spence? And a, and a lot of times we do the same thing, church. All churches is nothing but a performance so that we can look good in front of the other. Instead of letting the word and letting God perform through you, you come to church performing for everybody else. And then as soon as you get home, click, click, nasty, boom, bat, whatever, the flesh kicks in as soon as you walk out the door. And that's the difference between a man of God and woman of God that's anointed by God. That's why there's power in their preaching, amen. Because it's God working through them. It's not a performance. And you can tell the difference. That's why it says perform. He will perform that work. Amen? And that's why, thank you, Holy Ghost, and that's why whenever we do get an opportunity, we can be confident in him because we know that it's him doing the work through us, as Pastor always says. But you got to let him do the work to you Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So what work is he doing to you throughout the week so that he can perform through you, amen? Because if he ain't doing nothing to you, then you just up there performing. If I want a performance, I'm going to go see the Commodores, you know? I'm going to see Earth, Wind, and Fire, you know, somebody like that, you know, if I want to perform it. I didn't come to church for no performance, amen. God, hey, watch this. God didn't come to church for no performance. He's trying to look for people that he can work his power through. He's looking for people who understand their purpose. He's, under, he's looking for people that understand the prophetic call that is upon their life so that he can put his super on, his, on your natural and use you, amen. Hallelujah. 
That's what he's looking for, and that's why Paul had so much confidence. Now watch this. Now, uh, back when we look back at Ephesians 2 and 10, and it says, and living the good life. Now watch this. Now, it, I'm sure in the heavenlies, as God is looking on the life of Paul, I'm sure he didn't take no pleasure when the brother was getting stoned. I'm sure. I sure that had to break his heart. I know it had to break his heart every time they, he saw his son being whipped. I'm sure that had to hurt him. I'm sure it hurt him when he saw him shipwrecked and hungry and cold and nowhere to go, Brother Charlie. You see what I'm saying? But watch this. But, he, but, 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 but the Lord said, look, Paul, your life is in my hand. I got a plan, and all of this has been prearranged. So just know that even when you're floating on a, on a piece of wood out in the middle of the water, it's still the good life. See, 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 we, see, we always want to, we always want to put a label on what we think the good life is, but maybe what you think the good life is, isn't really the good life. Because if I'm living the God life, then there's going to be some trials. There's going to be some, uh, uh, some tribulations. Jesus says, no servant is above the master. And if they tried me, they're going to try you. But you got to determine, well, do I want the good life or I want the God good life? Paul said, I want the God good life, and, he sh and his back showed it. Paul, can you come up and take off your shirt, sir? Oh, man, look at those scars on your back. Lazarus, you're sick? Oh, did y'all hear about Lazarus? He just died. What? See, God don't take pleasure in the bad things that happen to us, but he can use it for the good. And if you get the right perspective, if you look at it correctly and you understand and you stand in the mess, you stand in the hurt, you stand in the pain, convinced and sure of this very thing, that he who began a good work in me will continue that work till the day Jesus calls me home. And that's the prophecy, amen. That's the purpose, amen. And when, you, and when we begin to understand this, that's why I told the ladies this morning, uh, you know, I didn't get a chance to talk to Michelle about it, but I had a little thing again this weekend, you know, and I had to eat some humble pie and come and apologize for my nastiness and the, my words and my temper, you know. But the thing about it is, what I love about it, in the midst of it, it's still good because God said, you're going to do this. And you're going to apologize. And you're going to humble yourself. And when I did, bam, I got the promotion because I experienced the power of peace. And I experienced the power of God working through me as I humbled myself. I experienced the power. And that's the blessing, amen? So if you're powerless, then what, what, what are you doing? And he speaks to you and he says, I'm trying to put a good work in you so that you can continue doing what I've started. Is your hand up and saying no? Or is your arms out like Jesus and says, here I am? No man is above the, sir. Uh, 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 Jesus says, none of you are above the master. Jesus stretched out his arms and said, Lord, here am I. And if this is what it takes, so be it. Do you have that same attitude? Do you have the attitude with your arms open wide saying, Lord, whatever it takes, here I am, use me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Makes sense, doesn't it? Makes sense, makes sense. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, sorry, let me see what time it is. Okay, okay, thank you, ma'am. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, so, so don't you or shouldn't you at least feel encouraged by what the word of God is saying to you this morning? Yes. Do you have a clearer understanding of the prophetic that is on your life? Do you have a better understanding of your purpose here on earth? It's not just to please yourself. See, it, see, see, God is so good. Watch this. God is so good that he will bless you and allow you to obtain some things that will please you. But you got to please him first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God 
and his righteousness and then all these things. But watch this. We want the things and then we seek heaven second. He didn't tell you to do that. You got it backwards. You got it backwards. And that's why we can't experience the power. You got to seek him first and his kingdom. And then all these things will be added unto you. He don't mind you driving a new car. He don't mind you buying a new house, you know. He don't mind you buying uh, shoes like Miss Carol back there in the back, you know what I mean? 20 million shoes and all these other gals, what they're doing, you know what I'm saying? He ain't got got a problem with that. But what he has a problem with is are you seeking those things or are you seeking the kingdom first? Because it was the kingdom mandate that he put on your life before before you bought them shoes. You had a kingdom mandate on your life before you bought the house or you bought the car, or you bought whatever things that you're into. You had a kingdom mandate on your life first, and then all these things shall be added unto you. Amen? Come on. Let's give God a round. Come on now. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And so, and that's why Paul says, and this is why I'm confident, because I am convinced and I am definitely sure that this is what he's going to do in me and through me. Amen? Okay, now, now, now watch this. And, it, and, and again, it says that he will perform it. He will perform those good works. He started it, and he, as Pastor always said, he will finish it. But don't, please, don't live your life in performance mode. It's so easy. And I mean, we're all guilty. I'm guilty. It's so easy to do. But if I'm going to perform, I'm going to perform for an audience of one. Hallelujah. I'm going to perform for you, Lord. I'm going to serve you, Lord. I'm going to do you whatever it is you want to do. You do it. I'm performing for you. And then out of that will flow everything that you need. Amen. Out of all that, the healing and the hope and the peace and the love and the joy, everything will flow out of that if you make him your main audience or whatever. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Okay. Thank you, Lord. Okay. Watch this. Watch this. Here we go. Again, the last point on the performance. He says that he's going to perform those good works within you. But in order for him to perform those good works, thank you, Holy Ghost, in order for him to perform those good works in you, the Holy Spirit has to control you. Do I need to say that again? Okay. In order for the good works that God has to be performed within you, the Holy Spirit has to have control on you. You don't control the Holy Ghost. You don't make him perform. He does what he wants to do. Amen? And if we're going to do good works, then somebody got to be in control. Don't be like Janet J. I'm in control. Control. Oh, oh, y'all don't don't, don't get me stopped. Oh, oh, control. Okay, okay, okay. I just had a little throwback real quick. Sorry. (laughs) Watch this. And because we're so much control freaks, amen, uh, we want control of our lives. We want control of our thoughts. We want control of our money. We want control of our gifts and talents. We want control of our bodies. We want control of everything, and you're not willing to unleash or release that control to the Holy Ghost. And you wonder why you're powerless. And you don't know what your purpose is. Because you're bucking the prophetic word that God spoke over your life, again, before you were born on this earth. Does that make sense? You have to release that control. Holy Ghost, you're in control. And watch this. Oh, okay. Okay, ladies, y'all going to remember this one, Sunday school class. Watch this, watch this, watch this. So, so, So if we're saying God's in control, right? God, I want, you, I want you to use me. Let's just say you have a prayer. Lord, I love to be used by like Billy Graham. And did you hear, did, uh, as a matter of fact, did y'all hear what Dr. Graham said? There's a price to pay. If you want to be used like that, you better be ready to pay the price. Hallelujah. 
because you're not, you're not going to get on that kind of stage and, 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 and be half, 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 uh, <laughs> thank you, Lord. <laughs> Woo! You can't be half stepping and, and half living and, and doing what you want to do if you want to do, if you want that kind of stage. Amen. Watch this. Watch this. If you want the touch, you better be ready for the test. Somebody better write that down. As a matter of fact, tweet it and put it on Facebook. If you want the touch, you better be ready for the test. And the test is coming. Soon as you walk out these doors, soon as you get off the property, here comes the test. Are you going to pass it or not? And depending on how you deal with the test is whether God can say, yo, I can look down and say, Oh, Pastor Bob, he, he passed the test. Now let me give him a touch. Hallelujah. That's how you experience the supernatural, amen. That's how we experience the prophetic, amen. This is how we understand the purpose, amen. Because look, he brought all kinds of tests my way, and I was just passing them like, boom, boom, you know, fighting them off, you know. Yeah, God, we, we, oh man, look at that Willie. He's swinging that sword. He done passed the test. Now let me give him a touch. Hallelujah. Because watch this, and it's not, and, and thank you, Lord, and it's not just for, for just Billy Graham. It's for Floyd daughter. It's for Michelle daughter. It's for Spen It's for all of us. We all, we all have the same opportunity, thank you, Lord, at the foot of the cross. But the thing about it is, are you willing to pass the test so that you can get the touch? The touch of the glory, the touch of the Holy Ghost, the touch of the word molding and shaping and recreating your heart, having your mind be renewed by this word so that when the time comes and God wants to use me in some type of matter, I'm ready. Put your hand on me and use me, Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. Put your hand on me, Lord, and use me. Okay, now let's, uh, let's and, we'll, and we'll wrap this up. I, let's just, I, you know how it goes, y'all. There's so much. There's so much, okay? Uh, okay, let's read this last one, and then we'll call it quits, and then I'll pick up the next time we, we get at it, okay? So uh, Romans chapter 8, and let's look at verse 5 through 8. Romans chapter 8, and let's look at verse 5 through 8. And sis, if you don't mind, please. <laughs> yeah. Romans chapter 8 and verse 5 through 8, please. For those who are according to the flesh and are controlled by its unholy desires set their minds on and pursue those things which gratify the flesh. Mm -hmm. But those who are according to the spirit and are controlled by the desires of the spirit set their minds on and seek those things which gratify the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Through eight. Switch. Now the mind of the flesh which is sense and reason without the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. is death. Death that comprises all the miseries arising from sin, both here and hereafter. Mm -hmm. But the mind of the Holy Spirit is life and soul peace, both now and forever. That is because the mind of the flesh, with its carnal thoughts and purposes, is hostile to God, for it does not submit itself to God's law. It, it cannot. So then those who are living the life of the flesh, catering to the appetites and impulses of their carnal nature, cannot please or satisfy God or be acceptable to him. Okay, okay, okay. Again, here, here I'm, I'm going to just touch on this again. No condemnation, but just hopefully there would be revelation uh, that would just enlighten us, okay? Now, first of all, it says right off the bat, it says, for those who... Uh, who are according, verse 5, for those who are according to the flesh and are controlled. Remember, see, controlled. What are you controlled by? Are you controlled by your flesh or are you controlled by the Holy Spirit? Amen. And whatever you're controlled by, that's what you're going to pursue. Did you, did you see it right there? 
You see it? It says, so, so those who are according to the flesh and are controlled by unholy desires set their minds on and they pursue those things which gratify the flesh. But those who are according to the Spirit and what? Are controlled by the desires of the Spirit, they will set their minds on them and seek those things which gratify the Holy Spirit. So if we're going to live a life of purpose and if we're going to fulfill our prophetic destiny, then you got to decide what you're going to pursue, what you're going to set your mind on every day. Because wherever my mind goes, I will follow. So what are you setting your mind on every single day? And the test is going to come. The enemy doesn't want us to fulfill our God-ordained purpose. Hear that. Satan does not want you to fulfill your God-given destiny, your God-given purpose, the prophetic word that God spoke over your life before you were even in your mother's womb. Satan doesn't want you to fulfill that. So he will do his best to send fiery darts and thoughts and opportunities and different things to get your mind set on your desires, to get your mind set on the flesh so that you can, as we've been talking about in class, uh, when we're under spiritual authority, he wants to get you from up under that authority. But not only are you up under that authority, you have to stand on the authority of the word. So if you get from up under the authority and you remove your foot from off the authority, then all your mind is going to think about is flesh, flesh, flesh. Amen? Is this real talk, church? Real talk, Charlie, right? Okay. So, you, so we see how this works, okay? Now watch this. So, so who are you being controlled by? Again, where do you set in your mind? And I'm going to run through this. Okay, watch this. Verse 6. And it says, Now the mind of the flesh, which is common sense and common reason, watch this, without the Holy Ghost. Everybody said, boy, don't you got any common sense? You know what? I don't want common sense. I want wisdom wisdom see watch this it says now the mind of the flesh which is common sense and common reason without the Holy Ghost with the Holy Ghost you'll have some sense with the Holy Ghost you can have reason and if you just have your basic sense common sense and common reason then all you're going to think is death and if you're thinking death then your life is going to show death You're going to act like what you think. Come on now, you're going to act like what you think. Is that true, church? Okay, now watch this, watch this. Death that comprises all the miseries. Wait a minute, sir. I thought you were a born-again Christian. Why are you so miserable? Why are you so miserable, ma'am? Don't you have that big house up on the hill and a BMW and you got a pastor for a husband? Why are you so miserable, ma'am? Maybe because it's what they're setting their minds on. That's why Romans 12, 1 and 2 is so important. That's why you got to renew the... I'm going to say it one more time. You got to renew the... Amen. Watch this now, watch this, watch this, which is death. Death that comprises all the miseries arising from sin. Now, let me say this. Now, I, we can't help if, if we're in situations and someone places or tries to place their misery on us. Because sometimes that's going to happen. Like, for an example, you're a child and you grew up in an abusive home. They're putting their miseries on you. We can't help that. But that's why God says, when I recreated you, I gave you the prophetic word, which is to renew your mind. Romans 12, 1 and 2. Amen. So there is no excuse. We all got something that we're thrown into, and it's a miserable situation. It's not a happy situation, but if I renew my mind and set my mind on the king, amen, then I won't live a miserable life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, all right, we're almost almost there, folks. Hang on. Okay, watch this. Arising from sin, uh, verse 6, both here and hereafter, but the mind of the Holy Spirit. Woo! 
the mind of the Holy Ghost is life and soul peace, both now and forever. Amen? So that's why we should be walking in peace. Amen? And that's why the Lord is always spanking my butt, because he's training me and teaching me, Rachel, how to walk in soul peace. Amen? He's teaching all of us that how can I maintain peace? You want peace? Set your mind on the Holy Ghost and those things which gratify the Holy Spirit. Does that make sense, church? Okay, almost, we're almost there. Let me, let me just finish this. We're almost there. Okay. That is because, watch this, verse 7. That is because the mind of the flesh with its carnal thoughts and what? So you mean to tell me my mind has a, my carnal thoughts have a, wait a minute, I thought God said that I have a kingdom purpose, but if I'm not fulfilling my kingdom purpose, then I'm fulfilling my carnal purpose. No wonder why I'm miserable. No wonder there's a lot of misery in the church. A lot of backsliding, dipping and dabbing. I did it. I was miserable, if I be honest with myself. Miserable as can be. But I'm going to take it out on her, and I'll take it out on the computer. You know, oh, what's up, what's up, yo, what's up, what's up, girl, you know? Oh, wait a minute. Oh, put that ring in my pocket. Terrible. Terrible, Michelle. No wonder. She didn't deserve that. No woman deserved that. I don't care who, I don't care. No woman deserves that, amen? amen. And all God's ladies say? Come on, ladies, y'all, now y'all are supposed to get my back, women. I'm trying to help hook you up here. I just threw you out a little something, man. I'm trying to look out for you, okay? Now watch this, watch this. Okay, we're, we're getting there. I'm almost landing the plane. Okay, watch this. It says, because uh, the mind of the flesh, watch this, with its carnal thoughts, carnal, carnal. You ladies, didn't we talk about this just a while, a while back? Carnal, carnivorous, meaty. Fleshy. See, a wolf is a carnivorous type of eater. You walk up on a wolf and watch what happens. But that's why the Lord says in the church we have sheep and we have. Excuse me. <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> excuse me. All the wolves in the church howl. <laughs> Lady, stand up. Amen, brother. Ooh. Oh, there, there goes the wolf. Y'all know him now. <laughs> and then Jesus says, beware of those who are uh, sheep, but they're, but they're wolves, but they're dressed in what? Sheep's clothing. Why? Carnivorous. Meaty. Fleshly. That's right. We'll eat you up. Watch out, boy, she'll chew you up. Okay, okay, y'all know I got to throw them out there every now and then, Miss Shirley. Don't get me, Miss Shirley. <laughs> Miss Shirley, boy, I thought you had it, but then you lost it again. <laughs> I love you, Miss Shirley. <laughs> No, but Shirley said, I ain't saying nothing. God got you. That's what she tells me. Okay. So, so, so if I'm operating in a carnal nature, then I'm operating like a wolf. Carniv carnivorous. Needy. Arr, arr, you know? Okay, now watch this. Okay. We're getting there. We're getting there. Okay, watch this. So, uh, verse 7, with its carnal thoughts and so we understand we're, we're supposed to be living the kingdom purpose, not the carnal purpose. Amen? Okay, now watch this. And watch this. And is hostile to God, for it does not submit itself to God's law. So how can I get up and preach, talking about I'm preaching the gospel, when I've been living like a, a carnivorous wolf all week long? I'm hostile to the gospel. I'm hostile to the Holy Ghost. But then I want to get up here and preach to you? Or you want to preach to me? But you're hostile? Because you've been living like a wolf all week long, carnivorous? You're hostile 
to the gospel. Because the word says right here, the carnal thoughts are hostile to God. Thank you, Holy God. That's why when the man and woman of God is preaching in the anointing, that's why you get attitude. Because you don't like what the man is saying. You don't like what the woman is saying, but it ain't the man and it ain't the woman. It's the anointing flowing through them. (laughs) Hallelujah. That's the Holy Ghost. That's when you know the man and the woman is full with the Holy Ghost because it's just slapping you all up inside your head. Okay, now? And then watch this, and then watch this. So, so, so now you're hostile to God. You're hostile to other people. And then watch this. So, 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 so how can I be hostile to my brother or, or, or to my sister and then want to talk about love, love, love when I'm hostile to my brother and sister because of my carnal thoughts about them? Come on now. You think in nasty thoughts, you speak in nasty thoughts, you're saying all kinds of crazy stuff about your brother and your sister, but then you're saying that you're all full of love? Wait a minute, the word says that if my carnal thoughts, if my thoughts are carnal towards you, then I'm hostile towards you. And, and watch this, and watch this. And I cannot submit myself to you. And I won't submit myself. And an unsubmissive self is a rebellious self. Ooh, Lord have mercy. If I cannot submit to my brother and sister in love, see, God made you in love. He prepared all the good works for you in love. What right do you have not to love somebody back? Who do you think you are? That's because your mind is set on the flesh, and that's why you're hostile, and that's why you can't submit, because your mind ain't set on the Holy Ghost. Your mind ain't been renewed. Your heart ain't in the Word, and the Word can't do nothing in you. Because you're not letting the Word do something in you. And that's, why, and that's why we have a hard time. That's why, you know, people don't want to, uh, 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 well, brother, you know, I, I, you know, I, I just want to say this in love, you know. <laughs> that's why people have a hard time. Because we don't, I don't know if I'm going to get a sheep or I'm going to get a wolf. <laughs> Ain't that right, mom? I'm coming to you in love and just trying to be real with you, but then the wolf done jumped out and attacked me, mom. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you think you are? Who do you think you're talking to? You think you're all that. The wolf just done jumped out and ate me up. I just was just trying to come to you and just be real, man. I, the word says speaking the truth in love. Amen. Okay, almost done. Let me, can, I, can I just finish this last verse, pa- Pastor? Everybody cool? Can I just finish this last verse? Okay, okay, okay. So, so watch this. So, so, so here it is. The carnal thoughts, carnal purposes, is hostile to God. And it does not submit itself to God's law, for indeed it cannot. The highest law that we should be submitted to is love. Love is the highest law that God has placed upon this earth for us to live by. So how can you live by the law of God if you have carnal thoughts and you're hostile and you're carnivorous and you're like a wild wolf ready to pounce on anybody that says anything to you that you don't like, even if they come to you in love? Last verse. Here it goes. Verse 8. So then, those who are living the life of of the flesh, watch this, catering, catering. Mama Justine, don't you do some catering? (laughs) Catering. (laughs) Mom, don't you cater to your husband when he has need? She does. Cater. See, there. See, <laughs> see, see, there's the good and the bad, but right here is saying that if you cater to the appetites, verse 8, 
if you cater to the appetites and the, the impulse, you, you cater to the appetites and the impulses of your carnal nature, you cannot please or satisfy God or be acceptable. I'm not accepted. I wonder why. What are you catering to? Because you're trying to get acceptance by death instead of being accepted by life. Because the Lord said that before you were born, I spoke a prophecy over your life, I spoke purpose over your life, and I pre-planned it all for you in love. Amen? But if you're going to set your mind on the carnal nature, if you're going to set your mind on, I'm going to get mine, if you're going to set your mind on things, then you will not be acceptable to him. You cannot please him and you cannot satisfy him. And again, we wonder why so many Christians are miserable. And not because you don't understand your purpose. You don't understand your purpose. You don't understand the prophetic words that were spoken over your life before you was being born. That's why, again, Ephesians 2 and 10 says it's the good life. The God life is the good life because he got it all worked out. He's got it all planned. He's got it all figured out. All you got to do is just submit yourself Humble yourself before the Lord so that you can understand what his plans are, what his purpose is, what's the prophetic word that he spoke over your life. Amen. So don't tell me, please don't tell me that when it comes to God, that there's prophetic power in purpose. There is prophetic power. Power. Somebody say power. power. Come on, say power. power. There is prophetic power and purpose. And I hope and pray that you will understand. There's a whole nother thing, but I'm going to leave it right there until next time, Papa. But I'm telling you, this thing goes deeper and deeper and deeper. But all I just want to plead with you, please, people, understand your purpose, please understand the prophecy that was spoken over your life before you were even born on this earth amen so that you can fulfill the promises you can live the good life amen again the god life is the good life amen i love you and i want y'all to know god bless you i appreciate this house I appreciate the man and woman of God. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for reading for me, Rachel. I just want to say, say this. That, uh